Okay, well, welcome to this part of the lesson. And this is a, a new lesson um, that I did on painting the hummingbird and geraniums. And I did the first half of the video for all the Patreons and the different um, tutorial tiers, but I thought, while I'm at it, I might as well do this beautiful hummingbird. Um, it looks like a female or it's a baby just getting its green spots, but I thought it's it looks so pretty. It's kind of a rusty color that you don't see very often. So I'm just gonna add that now into my into my picture. So I'll just use to start drawing some of this, a um, little bit of this brown oxide. And kind of get the angle. There's a little part of the beak there. Got a little cute little head. And then a little bit of a, a curve in the neck. And then the little tail. Little belly. And then kind of underneath the beak there. And then we've got the action wings. Fluttering wings here. Like that. And that's just a little brown oxide I had out. Um, there's quite a lot of that rusty kind of brown color. So you could use some of that, even that red oxide would be a good one. Transparent red oxide. And you got that beautiful little tail. I'll stab some of that turf off there. So there, now you've got a hummingbird on there. And so I'll have that reference photo along with the other one. So now it's kind of a matter of, you know, choosing the colors you want. I really like that, you know, there's some real bright white. So I'll add a little bit of that white with a tiny touch of that yellow ochre in the neck up here. There's white, and then as the white comes around the body, it turns into a real pretty, um, looks kind of purple, the, the color. And so there's some of that white there, but I'm gonna mix up a little. I've got a little bit of this purple from the first half of the video I can use some of that in the shadow and work that up there. And I'll take a little bit of that pink and I'm gonna add a little bit of pink there because it's catching all that pink light from the geranium. Whoops, I want more pink that pink off my brush. Get a little bit of this um, orange. Can mix in some of that brown oxide in there and just put some orange on there to catch that nice light. Dab some of that in there. And You can put a little more of that purple. In the shadow here. That way you're, you don't want the light catching the neck to be as, as bright as this underbelly and area. You want that to be the, where the light's catching. 
And I'll just get a little more of that red oxide and that orange. Maybe a little cobalt blue to dull it down. And in the shadows, I'll put some of that. Maybe a little more cobalt. Kind of get that shadow and that wing there. There we go. And get a little more of that down in there. And for the wing, I'm going to use some of that mixture. I had some dioxazin and some brown. Uh, brown oxide and white. I'll give us sort of that color. Of that wing. First of all, get some of that in there and then we'll. Loosen it up a little and I'm going to mix some white into that mixture. Dioxazin, violet white and a little bit of, you know, if there's still some brown oxide in there. Just add a little bit of that light that kind of comes through the wings. I just give a little, you know, a little swipe of that light color coming through. Doesn't, because there's a million of those little lines, so I'm, I'm really simplifying it. Get a little more of that purple and brown oxide and just kind of darken that. wing there a little more. Show that that's on the, you know, on the shadow there. And I'm going to dab some of that in the shadows here. Just get a little more of that brown oxide. And I want to show where that belly kind of comes down. There's a little line separating the kind of the belly and the tail. And now I want to get a little lighter um, mix of that dioxazin and white and get a few real light um, highlights on that wing there there so and there's some real light catching that wing. And then I just use my brush and I'll kind of drag a little bit of that up to create the action hummingbird wing. Okay, now I haven't really done any details on um, on the face yet, so I'm just gonna get a little cobalt here and put that in just to get that shadow color of even more in there. So now I'm going to switch to a smaller brush, um, get a little bit of this black and the black I'm using is this Mars Ivory Black. Okay, so I'm just gonna get some black on my brush and work that little eye in there, sort of around here. And then it kind of has a little dark 
line in towards the beak. So I've got to kind of trim the beak down when I paint the background. It's a little bit thick because I had the turf on, too much turf maybe on my brush. So just working that in and then I'm going to go and clean my brush. And get a little bit of that um, that white and some of that cobalt blue just so it's not like a bright white you want it to be sort of a bluey white in the shadow and just kind of put in some of that lighter uh, stuff that you see there and then there's sort of it comes all the way to the back of the eye sort of a white And then you've got sort of an orangey color around the eye, so I'll get some of the white and that red oxide mixture and get that in there. And then it gets a little bit more of a darker brown kind of surrounding the eye here. So I'm just going to get some of that red oxide and orange mix and just kind of get some a little bit darker on the front of his forehead there. And that kind of comes down into the beak. And I'm going to get a little more white and you can mix a little bit, a tiny touch of that red or brown oxide and just get that real light behind the eye there. And then I'm going to get some bright white and really get that highlight on the neck there. And a real bright orangey light highlight on the tail. And then you can get some more of that cobalt blue and just kind of fluff up around the belly. The cobalt blue and white mix there. And then I'll get some more of that red oxide and just sort of go back and detail in that little you know, that little neck area. Get a little brown oxide in the shadow just to really show off that, you know, that little shape of the kind of the neck area there. And I might even get a little more of that darker mix for the shadow down here. And get a little more of that red oxide and orange and a little bit of that pink, that permanent rose, and just put a little bit of that in the shadow, some of that. Maybe it needs to be a little darker, more red oxide in there. Just get a little bit of, of that. in the shadow it's a real kind of a rusty now if you wiped off too many of the lines just get a little bit of that purple and you can kind of add them back in those little feathers and just sort of soften them a bit and I'll put a little highlight of white can have a tiny bit of this cobalt mix so it's not 
your white and I'll put a little little highlight on the on the eye there as well as a highlight on the beak so I'll get some of that white and a little bit of cobalt or some of that kind of purple mix but some white and a little cobalt blue and that might be a little too light A little white and cobalt blue and just sort of put a little highlight on that beak there. Like that. And I see a little bit more of a cobalt blue in that dioxazin violet over here. I'm going to put a little hint of that and in here. And you don't really see the feet, but I always, I can see part of it. So I always just put a little hint of those black, uh, those little black feet in there. Get some of that dioxazin violet mix. And cobalt blue. So the colors are um, kind of fun in this one because of all the purples and oranges. And I'm gonna get a little bit of orange and white and just sort of get a few of those little feathers that are catching the light there. And uh, to put a little hint of that up here. And I'll take a little bit of that orange and put a few little dabs of it into the rest of the picture. Okay, so now basically you just kind of want to pick out something that sort of you can mix up for the background that's you know similar to the underpaint but you can kind of um, help the painting pop a little more I would maybe do the same mixture so the ultramarine and um, the brown oxide and white and then so you mix sort of a gray up and then add some yellow ochre to it so you get a real nice warm gray. And you can't really tell till you put it on the canvas if it's the right gray. So I'll mix up a little more white in there. And I don't mind if there's some of that purple or you can just kind of mix up stuff that's on your palette. Take a little bit of that red oxide mix, just sort of blend it in and you come up with a nice gray. And I think I think I like that color and you can mix in make make a little variety so grab some of that green and use some of your gray and you know, have some different uh, grays in there, greeny grays, uh, some of this in our basic gray mix, just 
kind of mix up a, a variety of those different grays. And I like to add a little purple in some of it. So you have all these kind of different different grays, but it kind of gives you a feeling of like if you blurred a photo, all the different colors that would be in the background. And once you get a few different colors like that going, just switch to your, your paintbrush and you can you can blend those in. And with the background now I can kind of cut in. That beak a little smaller like that. And when you do these gray backgrounds, you can add a lot of uh, variety to your to your background because you can kind of shift them ever so slightly to a different, you know, a different gray, but it all kind of works together. And you can always check if your contrast is, you know, if, it, if you want it to be a little more contrasting in certain areas, just lighten the gray around the, for example, right where you want people to look, like right near the hummingbird, you can lighten it like that, take a little more white into your mix and bring out some of that contrast between the, the hummingbird and the background. And then over here, it can be, you know, less uh, bright. And then other areas like this, where you have the stem, you know, here and here, where it's kind of showing off those, you know, stems in those areas can be interesting spots to kind of draw your eye. So that's about it, you know, just kind of going to keep working at adding some more gray to the background. But I think, um, I think you probably get the drift by now where I'm going with it. So just mix up your gray, the white, brown oxide and ultramarine blue. And then you can, once you have your base gray, you know, you can take a little dioxazin violet like this and have some more purpley grays. You can take some green into it and, you know, have some greeny uh, grays in the mix. So you just, you have lots of room to play with that. And um, you can add some blue. Just have a few bluey gray marks in there just can loosen up the background a lot and then at the end I just put a few little pink dabs here and there so I think that's about it and I'll have those reference photos underneath the the video in patreon so that you can paint along and use the reference photos and if you want to post your painting to the Facebook page um, that would be great so I can see how you're doing and thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video